I'm with Google, based here out of Singapore, and I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple big topics. One, Chromebooks, Chrome OS. Two, what is Chromebooks and what is Chrome OS? And then three, a big development where we're bringing the best of Android to Chrome. I've got a site up here. Um, if can you turn up, a little? yeah, I've got a site up here. If anyone has any questions, uh, you can go to this site at the top, load up, uh, load it up on your phone, laptop, fire off any questions, then uh, we can do a rapid fire at the end here. Okay. So, so what are Chromebooks? Um, Chromebooks are basically uh, Google's productivity operating system, right? Um, they're designed with a, a few key principles here. Um, speed, simplicity, security, and shareability. Okay, what I've got up here on stage, I've got three different Chromebooks. I've got one made by HP. This just came out. Super cool. Um, all of us love it at work. We also have the Chromebook Pixel made by Google. Um, this is the Pixel 2, also a great device. And number three, I've got the Acer R11. This guy just came out uh, about a month ago, and uh, it fully supports Android and the latest Chrome. Furthermore, it's super cool because it's a convertible. You can flip into a tablet. Okay. So um, what, what I'm going to run through here is uh, pretty rapid fire um, topics. Um, but first off, just like to get an idea. Um, how many people are familiar with Chrome OS operating system? See you raise hands. Okay. Nice. Um, how many people have actually used a Chromebook yourself? Anybody? Okay, cool. Um, how many people here are app developers? Chrome, web, Android, other, any of the above? Okay, very cool. All right. So I'm just going to run through a couple of quick topics here. Um, first off, uh, what does Chrome look like? Okay, let's just jump straight to a demo because that's obviously more fun here. So what I'm going to show is... Live and I've got some sound on this one. So if you can see this page, okay. Actually, it's over here. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. So what you see here is a Chrome web page. Anybody heard of Chrome AI Experiments? It's an awesome website where you can build HTML. Okay, you can build HTML5 apps that tap into all the cool stuff uh, with AI. I'm going to do a quick demo here, some funky music. Ready to rock image recognition with me. Take a picture and they'll tell you what I see. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a photo. Snap a photo. On a Chromebook, this is a web page, right? Waiting for you. And everyone smile. I am ready. Yeah. Here, here, here we go. I'm on it. All right. I think audience is what we've got. Not bad. Could be sport venue, but maybe not. Nah, nah, maybe, nah. maybe not. <laughs> okay, what else? Cool. Yeah, let's do one more. Uh, what do you guys want? Laptops? Yeah. 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 <laughs> on it. Looks like room to me. Huh? I'm seeing technology, probably. Yeah, yeah, a lot of tech. Turn it off. All right, there we go. All right. So we could do that all day, but... Uh... Synthesis. Yeah. <laughs> Don't stop. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stop. It's the problem with awesome. AI. It's uh, he, they know. All right, cool. So, <laughs> very cool. So check it out. Do a search. Uh, uh, Chrome AI experiments. There's a bunch of cool stuff up there. That's one of many cool ones. Okay. So back to slides. Um, okay. So what we're doing here is. Um, and, and, and what you've seen is, again, a Chromebook with uh, the Chrome browser doing all sorts of very cool HTML, uh, HTML5 Chrome things. Um, Chromebooks, uh, quick, uh, just a quick run through. Chromebooks are actually huge in the US. Um, we're selling uh, in the US every day about 30,000 new Chromebooks uh, each, and every, each and every day activated. 58% um, of the devices actually sold in US schools uh, last year were Chromebooks. So there's a lot of interesting things happening there. And um, we're also seeing international growth. Actually, a few days ago, um, Chromebooks are now the best-selling devices in Sweden. OK. Um, as for Singapore, quick plug here. Uh, last week, uh, Chromebooks were featured on the cover of the Business Times. Check it out. Uh, just came out on Mar March 6th. Um, but Chromebooks have been shortlisted uh, from several vendors here for, uh, some, for some uh, Singapore government projects. So that's pretty, pretty cool. 
Okay, so um, just a couple quick milestones. Um, 2016, Chromebooks were the best, uh, were the best selling, uh, uh, second most popular operating system in the US. A lot of big growth, a lot of devices, 800,000 sold annually. Um, here's a big, big run through of just uh, organizations that are actually using Chromebooks in the enterprise. A lot of logos here. Some you might recognize, Netflix, um, Charity Water, Pinterest, a lot of good things. Um, here at Google, we love Chromebooks. A lot of us are, are, are on them. Um, okay, so let's just jump, jump to the topic here. So Chrome OS. So uh, good open source crowd here. Does anyone know here, um, can anyone tell me the name of the open source effort associated with Chrome OS? Chromium OS? Exactly, Chromium OS, nice, nice. And just like the Chrome browser, you have Chromium browser. We have a similar effort with the uh, Chromium OS. Um, what is Chromium OS? Basically, it's, uh, it's supported by the open source community. Um, it runs on x86 hardware, AMD hardware, AMD 64, as well as ARM chips. It's super cool, you wanna check it out. You can also run on, on your own architectures if you wanna really get uh, down and dirty. Um, and it ships with its own uh, um, uh, optimizations, right? It brings some of the best features of Chrome. I'll get into one detail here later. Um, how is it different? Chrome and uh, Chromium and Chrome OS are a little bit different in terms of security and, and other features, which I'll get into. Um, what's the difference? So Chrome OS is actually the Google product that OEMs ship. So Chrome OS is on this device. It's made by an OEM, Acer. It's made by this device. Made by Google. It's made by this device. Uh, made by HP. Um, Chrome OS actually provides auto updates, optimized hardware. There's some chips in here that uh, really lock down in terms of security, uh, antivirus, et cetera. Um, Chromium OS is our open source counterpart. It doesn't have all the features in terms of auto updates and optimized hardware, um, but it does have all the code available uh, for developers to download and modify. You can download your own builds, hack around with it. Um, anyone can check it out. And again, uh, it works on all sorts of uh, fun hardware. Uh, quick detail here in terms of uh, one way that Chromium OS benefits from Chrome OS is our fast boot. Um, on the left, you see how typically most OS's load, right? I'm sure if you have servers, laptops, whatever, every time you turn on your computer, right? CPU's gotta initialize, you've got hardware that's gotta initialize, in your video, then a splash screen, then it might jump back up to a bootloader, then your kernel's gotta fire up, maybe another splash screen, some random stuff, maybe a login, invisible apps, then your browser, then your antivirus fires up before you can get on the web. With Chrome OS, the vision was, hey, let's just build something for the web that just instantly loads and boots, right? So on the right, what you have in Chromium OS as well as Chrome OS, much simplified concept. The device initializes, kernel loads, hardware initializes, boom, you're at login, boom, you're on a browser. So it's very quick. Um, all devices boot within seven seconds, which is, which is fun. Um, Chrome OS ecosystem. So you, have, you, you see a couple gadgets here. Um, furthermore, we have a booth downstairs if you want to check it out. I've got three, four of these Acers. If you want to check it out, we've got Android devices, et cetera. You can, you can play around. Um, but we have different types of devices. Um, we have laptops, clamshells like you see here. Um, we've got devices that are uh, specially built for kiosks that are really cool. Um, digital signage, perfect for Chrome. Um, we have Chromebooks, uh, Chrome solutions for signs and uh, for meetings, um, Chromebox for meetings, which is pretty interesting. Um, zooming in, just some quick detail, Chromebook, you see it, good for productivity kiosks. We've got Chromeboxes, those are what's behind these meeting devices. Chrome base, it's almost like an all-in-one machine. You just turn it on and it's super simple to use. And uh, the Chrome bit, anyone here hear about the Chrome bit? Okay, uh, Chrome bit's really cool. It's a device maybe the size of this, uh, actually smaller than this, um, little HDMI, device and you plug it into any TV and it turns it into a Chromebook. It's pretty cool. Okay, a lot of images here, but these are all the sorts of Chromebooks that we have. Um, here's the Chrome bit that I mentioned before. We've got different uh, uh, convertibles, mini devices, Chrome base. This guy up in the blue up here, the R11, that's what we have downstairs and uh, right here if you wanna check it out. Um, quick thing, any IT admins here? Okay, cool. Um, Chromebooks are easy to manage. Um, there's a lot of policies you can manage. Um, long story short, all Chromebooks um, connect to the web and, and check in in terms of what their role is. And if you're an IT administrator, you can buy hundreds or thousands of Chromebooks and you can manage them all through the web. No CD-ROMs, no USB, really cool stuff. 
I'm not gonna get into that here today, but just wanna call that out. Okay, infrastructure. Um, Chrome OS works well with existing infrastructure, so you can set all these guys up to log into your SSO servers, to authenticate themselves. Um, uh, you can enable, disable USB peripherals, all sorts of wild stuff. Um, connectivity, VPN built in, um, uh, products like uh, Palo Alto Networks, Dell Firewall, all those uh, I'll, I'll, I'll work here um, if you have private networks. Okay, so let's get to the point here. So Android apps on Chromebooks. Um, let's just jump into a demo here. So, three demos. I'm gonna do uh, three quick ones. I'll show you Play Store, I'll show you uh, a new app we released, super cool, Google Science Journal, and then an uh, actual a game, Real Drift Racing. So as the previous uh, folks uh, warned, live demos are always entertaining, but let's, uh, let's try it out here. So here is the Play Store of the Chromebook. Let me do it this way. Okay, so here is, uh, all right, let's do it this way. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, how's that? Cool, all right, so, Google Play Store, running on my Chromebook. Um, maybe to simplify here, all sorts of things going on. You've got the Play Store icon down here. Whoop. Same thing you see on this, uh, maybe on your phone. And if I load it up, um, it's the same Play Store that I see on my you know, phone or tablet, right? These are all the apps I can download, install. Um, I can browse the catalog, et cetera. What does it look like to actually install an app? Um, let's go down and install Google Translate for Android, because that's always a fun, fun app. So I tap on the app, Google Translate, it's a touchscreen device, hit install, downloading, nice Wi-Fi, installing, and there we go. Google Translate's now installed. So I tap on this guy, and here we go, an Android app running on my Chromebook. I can even translate offline, download languages, right? So if I go to Indonesia or if I go to India, uh, you've, you've, you've got everything, uh, everything you have on an on a Android app available here. Okay. Uh, the next demo is Science Journal. So this app is pretty cool. Again, this is an Android app. Um, what I'm gonna show you here is how this Android app can use the Chromebook sensors to collect raw data, okay? So I'm gonna tap on this, it's an experiment. I'm gonna tap on that. And as you can see, you've got the live recording of sound. And you can record, get all the data, and it's, you can see the latency. It's pretty, pretty high quality latency considering this is an Android app running on a Chromebook, right? And the last demo is a racing game. This is using um, Unity. So I'm gonna turn my Chromebook around, see if that plays nice. And here we go, we got a drift racing game. Tap the screen to play. And what's cool about this app is that it actually uses the gyro and the accelerometer to, um, uh, to, to play the game here. So if you turn up the volume. Oh, sorry. Yeah, cool. So I can use this G-Sense pad, and as I rotate the device, I'm cruising, right? It's pretty cool. Again, Android on a Chromebook, full stack access to all the sensors. Um, yeah. Cool. Can't drive though. All right. Uh, the last thing maybe for this crowd, um, any Emacs fans here? Okay, VI? All right, yeah, yeah, all right, cool. Because I got the VI demo, I'm a VI guy. Um, but if you're, if you're in a VI, um, hey, there's a VI Android app you can install, right? You can blah, 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 right? Very cool. Um, VI on a Chromebook. Um, also, if you're a fan of, um, you know, command line tools, um, I'm using AppGit, getting some packages, and I wanna say I wanna do NS lookup. 
google.com, right? All this on a Chromebook, very cool. So it's not quite a full Linux workstation, right? But it's, you can, you can install, uh, install the tools to get there. Okay, so back to the deck. Okay. Okay, so we just quickly covered uh, Android apps on Chromebooks, what's going on. We did a Play Store install, Google Science Journal, Real dr Drift Racing, all fun stuff. Um, Android apps on Chromebooks. So really what we wanted to call out here is um, uh, Android really just brings a lot of enhancements to Chromebooks, right? Uh, with Chromebooks, you get the best of productivity. You got an actual laptop where you can type and create works, whereas maybe on a phone or a tablet, it's a little bit tough. Um, and uh, you have multi-size window apps, world-class browser, of course. Um, I didn't demo this, but you can run multiple Android apps all at the same time, which is fun. Um, manageability, I covered that. Um, and then you can just expand. Again, you get that offline experience that you have or you might love in Android, and you can bring that to the Chromebook um, for full offline access. Um, I'll get an application consistency a little bit later. Um, but generally, every Google app, uh, every Google Play app from the Play Store is available for Chromebooks, um, which, is, which is nice. Um, apps that aren't, uh, one thing to note is that Chromebooks don't have things like GPS sensors for now. Maybe, maybe vendors will add them, maybe not. Um, but apps that may require those sensors uh, just will not be present in the Play Store. Okay? But at the same time, if you use Google Maps, uh, you can use Wi-Fi networks to do locations. So there's some workarounds if you want to use the location API that, uh, for devices that don't have GPS. Okay. Um, admin experience, uh, not going to get into this, but basically there's a website. Again, if you're an IT admin, if you have 10 Chromebooks or 10,000 Chromebooks, you go to a certain website and you can manage them all. Very fun. Uh, Android Kiosk app. So this is coming soon, in a few days, I heard, um, in version M57. But basically what this means is you can now turn your Chromebook into an Android kiosk. So if you're an Android developer, you can set these Chromebooks up to boot up and only load your Android app, which is pretty fun, right? You could do a really interesting super secure, fast, stable system, which is just an Android app kiosk device, right? Take advantage of the touch screen, the sound, the security, et cetera. I'll quickly get into the new generation of Chromebooks. Um, these were just announced recently, being launched in the US now, but just wanted to bring on your, uh, your respective radars. Um, we have the new Samsung, Chrome, Samsung Chromebook 2, super cool. Um, it's uh, kind of an all-in-one. Um, really what we did here is by bringing Google Play to Chromebooks, we wanted to build the best of a Chromebook to take advantage of Google Play and really make, uh, really bring the best experience there for devices. Um, so this thing is really interesting. Um, quad HD screen, built-in pen, it's an all-in-one. Um, great device. Um, general price point, again, this is in the US. We have a Pro coming out, it's an Intel Core. It's coming out in April, about 550 US. And then the, uh, the Chromebook Plus, which is an ARM-based device, a um, little, uh, little less expensive, 449, um, came out uh, a couple weeks back. Um, one other quick plug here. Uh, these devices were just announced, um, new rugged Chromebooks. What's actually interesting here, if you see the stylus, um, this is a low-cost stylus with uh, no pairing, no syncing, um, and, uh, and, and, and no charging required. And what's really cool is it can work on any device. So you can imagine almost a future ecosystem where maybe you have low-cost styluses that are more or less disposable, you know, less than US $15 or so. Um, what does that mean? Well, uh, you have an interesting uh, platform there of, again, app development and whatnot, when uh, stylus has become much more of a commodity. Um, another just thing to mention, uh, a lot of these new Chromebooks are now coming out with a world-facing camera. 
So it's got a camera on the front like any other laptop, but it also has a camera actually on the keyboard. You can see an image here, right? What does that mean? Um, when you flip the device around, you can use the, uh, use the laptop as almost a tablet, right? Um, it's great for schools, great for enterprise, industrial apps, etc. Okay, Android apps, I'll go through this quick. Um, obviously, we worked with a lot of Google apps to make sure they run uh, super nice on Chromebooks. We also worked with a lot of developers. Uh, Adobe came out with a whole platform for uh, Android, uh, which is great. Um, Kindle, Evernote, if anyone's a fan of any of these. Um, these are just some of the ones we point out. Slack, um, Skype, works awesome on a Chromebook. The Skype Android app, very cool. Okay, so I'll quickly get into the uh, best practices here. Um, so, again, the cool thing is uh, Android apps just work on a Chromebook. Okay, literally, you see on the left, that's your Chromebook app, or sorry, your Android app on an Android phone. You install it on your Chromebook, it runs. Runs straight out of the box. Okay. Now, you'll note that it's a phone app designed for phones, so the UI and buttons, et cetera, are designed for phones. So as a developer, you, just, you might want to optimize your app for a much larger screen. Makes sense, right? Um, general input methods, Chromebooks are great. Again, trackpads, mice, styluses, there's a growing ecosystem of additional input methods which you can take advantage of with your Android app. Sensors, we covered that. Again, Chromebooks don't have GPS, but you can use the Wi-Fi location databases that are out there, either Google or other platforms, and, and, and it all works. Um, one big thing to note, obviously, with Android running on a Chromebook, you have a much bigger screen, right? So you can work on different uh, UI approaches you know, for that. Um, one thing to note, backup and restore. So one thing that's really cool, can't quite demo here, but when I log into a Chromebook, um, the Chromebook will remember all the Android apps I have installed on this Chromebook, okay? which makes sense. If I turn the Chromebook off, turn it back on, my Android apps are still there. If I'm on a plane, my Android apps are still there. I can use all the Android apps. But say I get to work, my laptop dies, so I get a separate Chromebook and I log in into the Chromebook with my account, the Chromebook will, over the air, download all those Android apps. Right? It'll install it all on the fly, just like if you get a new Android phone and it sucks down apps automatically. So we think that's a, a really cool feature, especially in maybe education, enterprise, um, if you're in IT. Um, it's really, really interesting. But it brings the user consistency there also to the Android side. OK, um, one thing to note, Chrome OS right now is based on Marshmallow. So what you saw here was the Marshmallow stack. Um, but pretty soon, we're going to bring the NuGet stack, uh, Android N, uh, for those not familiar. Um, it has a lot of cool features. I can't demo them, don't have time, but uh, multiple windows. You can resize. Um, you can actually uh, drag and drop items between Android apps. Super cool, but it's all about adding productivity, you know, the uh, productivity power of a Chromebook to Android. Um, here's some sites. You can get more information. You can Google it. Um, you can get info on how to optimize your app, um, what Android apps are popular on Chromebooks, as well as maybe how to uh, manage Android apps on Chromebooks if you want. Okay, and uh, last slide, live demo. So you can go downstairs if you want to check it out. Again, we've got a couple of these guys. Um, we've got the Science Journal. We've got the video game. Um, all sorts of fun things here. So um, yeah, if there's any questions, uh, give me a shout. Any, uh, any questions? Yeah. Does Play Services work the same way it does on a phone? Yeah, the question is, does Play Services work the same way as it does on a phone? Yeah, all the APIs, so it's full stop Android. Yeah. Just one other question? Yeah. Uh, I manage IT for schools, and in Cambodia, we're getting Chromebooks from Thailand, so it's like out of band. Uh, yeah. Is there any way to enroll them in Chrome management? Um, short answer it, Chrome is only enabled in certain countries. So I could talk to you offline about that, um, but it, it depends on a certain country. It depends on where we launch the Chrome management stack. Yeah, good question though. And thanks for bringing <laughs> Chromebooks there. Any other questions? Android, Chrome, yeah. It seems like now the, um, the Android OS on Chrome is not supporting its external USB device. Meaning it's not on like this, it's coming. Uh, sorry, so the question is, um, do Android apps support Access to external apps on a US. Um, the long answer is yes, but it's a matter of you, your Android app properly using the Android APIs on the Chromebook and making sure you're using the right Chromebook APIs to get to the USB. 
Now, in the future, that's something that will obviously be there. Um, I'm working on a few projects related to that, but I'd be happy to talk to you offline. But it, in, in a nutshell, the longer answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, will there be a port from <coughs> will there be a port of Chromium OS to the Raspberry Pi? A port of Chromium OS to the Raspberry Pi. Um, technically, yes. If you have a Raspberry Pi running, uh, what is Raspberry Pi? X86. Uh, no. Oh, it's ARM. Okay. Uh, so Chromium OS does support ARM chips. So technically, yes. Um, so it supports ARM, AMD64, x86. Um, and there's a great site on Chromium OS where you can dig around on a dev site. And there's actually a web page where people have posted all the platforms they've, they've had Chrome OS running on, everything from HP desktop towers to um, Dell servers, all, all, sorts of, all sorts of brands. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or, yeah, go ahead. Right. Sure, so the question is, um, is there any way to control an Adreno device from a Chromebook? Yeah. Um, I'd imagine you could get that to work if you have the right Android app, using the right interface calls, through the right hardware interface, or maybe Bluetooth to your Adreno device. So long answer, but m most likely possible. Web USB. Oh, actually, excellent point. Yeah, so Chrome OS has an a, a API called Web USB, where you can literally make a web page that accesses USB devices. Super cool. Yeah. Uh, and actually, sorry, there's one here. Yeah. Just a short question. So how do you find more hackable Chromebooks, where you can actually extend the disk and the things like that? Because it's very hard to find information about that right now. Yeah, yeah, good question. So the question is, again, how do you, uh, um, how do you find maybe more hackable devices in a way, like where you can pop it open, add some features? Um, the Chrome platform is more, um, uh, the, the Chrome OS ecosystem, it, uh, it's built on security, et cetera. So the short answer is no, you can't pop this open and add components. Um, but through Chromium OS, you could, you could run Chromium OS on another device and then use that to hack your device around. I have the old uh, Acer 720, which is very well. You can upgrade the disk on it, but it's great. But it's not officially supported. And how, but it's possible on a lot of these devices. But it would be good to have more information about what you can do. If you buy a limited device, and want to make changes. Yeah, short answer is Chromium OS is probably the best approach towards that. Um, Chrome OS is really built to be a one-stop kind of package device that's sealed, right, and, and not really built for that extensibility in, in mind. Yeah. There's one, I don't know how we are on time. Good. Sure. Uh, the question is, can you load Chromium OS on an old computer? Short answer, yes. Um, as long as it's um, an Intel x86 CPU, stack or AMD 64 stack or an ARM stack in terms of the chipsets? Uh, performance, um, it's, it's efficient. Um, lightweight kernel, it's based on Gen 2, I believe. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, performance is good. Yeah, yeah, I encourage you to try it out and I'd be happy to chat with you after if you have questions, yeah. Cool, any other questions? I'll be around. Feel free to find me if you have any more uh, burning questions or if you want to play around with stuff. Yeah, and cool. if you want to play around with Chromebooks, you're putting them at the Google booth downstairs. Any one of you have seen it? Know about it? So there's actually a Google booth downstairs. Uh, there are a few people there, a few mm. Chromebooks there. Go chat with them. Uh, and